The question is, what if you could communicate like the speakers do with mine? I would like to help you do that today. I'd like to help you do that in, in a 10 step program that I call the Rules of Engagement. 10 rules to rule the stage for dynamic presentations and engaging communications. And when I talk about ruling the stage, I'm not just talking about you standing up here and delivering a natural presentation. But I'm also talking back at work and making the most of those interviews. Standing out when you speak up at small group meetings and small group sessions. And making the most of those networking and business opportunities so that every time you open up your mouth, you draw people in. That's what the rules of engagement do. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark Williams, and I'm sort of like your doctor. <laughs> you know how your doctor tells you to open up your mouth and say, ah? I like to teach people how to open up their mouths and make everybody else in the room say, ah. <laughs> And why is there such a focus on delivery? One, this is my first time doing this survey in this room. Most responses are about delivery. And I'll tell you the other reason. Because of an article I read by W.B. Harker. Oh. <laughs> W.B. Harper. W.B. Harper was a professor at Ohio State University. In 1924, he wrote an article called The Value of Public Speaking. And in that article, he said, knowing one subject is only half the game. But your method of delivery, the way you get your message across to your audience, is a much more difficult matter. He said, ambitious leaders need to understand that what you say and how you say it may count more for your success than your own technical knowledge. And then he shared this metaphor that I have <laughs> And then he shared this metaphor that I absolutely love. <laughs> he said, your voice is like the neck of your mental model or your brain. See, it doesn't matter what's inside because no more will pass through than the neck of the bottle of a lot. In other words, it doesn't matter how much the ideas inside your brain can shake things up and leave a mark. If you don't open up your bottle cap, nothing happens. E, eye contact is essential. I always say that public speaking should be less like a presentation and more like an individual conversation with each and every person in the room. And we know this to be true, and yet it's not something we often see when it comes to eye contact. So how do you make sure you can look at almost everyone, if not everyone in your audience? The answer, five seconds. Pick someone in the audience and lock your eyes for about five seconds. Shift your focus to someone else and lock your eyes for about five seconds. Shift your focus to someone else and lock in your eyes for about five seconds. Why five seconds? Because five seconds is long enough to make somebody feel like you're making a connection without making them feel like you're creeping them out. <laughs> I didn't feel creeped out, right? <laughs> we want them to feel like we're making a connection, which is why I always love to say we need to take that term eye contact and rename it. I connect. Albeit for just five seconds. But now here's the deal. I don't really expect you to count to five, talk, and look. <laughs> so remember this. Focus and phrase. Five seconds is about the length of a sentence or a phrase. So every time you start a new sentence or a phrase, shift your focus to another person. Focus and phrase. Focus and phrase. Focus and phrase. That'll maximize your opportunity to look at as many people in the audience as possible. Raise your hand if I've made eye contact with you so far. <laughs> Well then, let's see if somebody else can 